This elegant brick mansion nestled on a quiet cul-de-sac is the home of the Irvins. On Facebook, they are the picture-perfect suburban family. But pictures can deceive, and in this case, the dream of the white picket fence became the nightmare of the yellow crime scene tape. The police and someone to my house, my children are trying to kill me. That's the chilling 911 call from a terrified Yvonne Irvin saying her two sons tried to kill her and her husband Zachary by blowing up the house. To turn on the gas in a fireplace and leave a lit candle is kind of a kind of a TV kind of way to, to do it. But this is no TV movie. It's a real-life drama taking place in Snellville, Georgia, an affluent suburb of Atlanta. Prosecutors say 22-year-old Christopher Irvin and his 17-year-old brother Cameron put drugs in their food, lit a candle, turned on the gas, and left the parents for dead. They've attacked me and my husband. They drugged us with Xanax. They've attacked us. They're trying to kill us. I don't know why they've done this. I really don't. I, I, I guess they assume they want the insurance money, I'm, I'm not sure. Cops say the boys waited out front for the house to turn into a giant explosion and fireball. When it didn't, they rushed inside and allegedly went on the attack. Yvonne managed to escape the brutal assault running upstairs to the safety of her bedroom. But it wasn't so safe there after all. I just heard them say, where did mom go? And they, they, they headed upstairs now. You can hear Yvonne screaming in fear for her life. Zachary managed to fight off his sons after they allegedly stabbed him. He runs into the garage, honking his horn, hoping neighbours would hear, but it was to no avail. We didn't hear any of that. We just felt that, you know, maybe we could have done something to help. Cops quickly arrived and arrested the boys, one of whom reportedly told detectives he had been planning this since he was 11 years old. I've seen cases where children plot or try to kill their parents. I've seen cases where children try and burn down the house that their parents live in, but I've never seen sort of the, the combination of events that we have here. Christopher, who was once a high school football star, and Cameron, who planned a career in the army, face charges of aggravated assault and arson. Unbelievably, prosecutors did not charge the pair with attempted murder. Why? In Georgia, aggravated assault, which is assault with the intent to murder, carries a maximum sentence of 20 years, while attempted murder has a maximum of 10 years in prison. Did your client try to kill his parents? I am not responding to any questions at this point. It is ridiculous for you to ask me that, and I am appalled that you would even begin to do so. Cameron's attorney, Mark Young, was more forthcoming to our Atlanta affiliate, WGCL. Did Cameron and Christopher Irvin try to kill their parents? No, absolutely not. And again, I mean, right now you, you've only heard one side of, uh, you know, what allegedly happened. So what happened to tear this nice family apart? The DA says there are two possible motives. The insurance money, as you heard on the 911 call, Yvonne thinks the kids wanted to cash in on their deaths. And tough rules. The DA saying the boys were unhappy with the strict house rules, like cleaning their rooms. Friends of the Irvins are still shell-shocked. This is a great family. This is a great set of kids. If you call a, tr a troubled home life is having everything you ever wanted, if that's being troubled, then I'll take that trouble every day. And in an almost unbelievable show of parental love, the parents, still recovering from the wounds that nearly killed them, say they actually forgive their sons. We have unconditional love and forgiveness for our sons. And we just want the world to understand that. Yvonne, with her eyes still black and blue and swollen, was with her husband at the jail, visiting their sons for the first time since the attack. But we forgive our sons, we love them unconditionally, and we had to make sure that they understand that. There's no bail for Christopher and Cameron Irvin. It's unlikely they'll ever return to their once quiet neighbourhood, forever scarred by rage, anger and attempted murder.